Welcome, everybody. Today's uh, video is titled, Do Not Be Sad in Jesus. And we're going to look today at the prophet Nehemiah. Now, he was alive in the time of the exile to Babylon. Now, when the Jews came out of Babylon, they came out in three different separate times. The first one was led by the prince, Zerubbabel, you find him in Haggai, Haggai chapter 2, Zechariah chapter 4, Nehemiah chapter 3. He led them out first and began to build the walls of Jerusalem and the second temple. Um, that's why it was called uh, the temple of Zerubbabel, the prince. Uh, and then you had the second coming out was led by Ezra the scribe and he went to begin to Continue the work began by the Prince Zerubbabel. But after the, both these cases, um, all the work stopped. The walls were broken down again and it was turning into a failure. So Nehemiah came out with the third exit from Babylon and he completed the whole work in 52 days and managed to um, deal with the Israelites' um, misbehavior when they begin to backslide, when they begin to intermarry, when the nobles would begin to slave their brothers, he single-handedly stopped all of that. So you can see how strong he was, very strong that Nehemiah could, he would, those um, Jews and priests that would intermarry with other nations, he would grab them and pull their beards out and slap them and pull their hair. So he was a man that was not afraid of conflict, very strong person indeed and even he would face prophetesses false prophetesses and people inside of their own temple that would seek to kill him so you can see how strong Nehemiah was okay so you may be strong in your workplace you may be strong figure in your family you may be strong financially but one thing Nehemiah was absolutely terrified of was being sad in the king's presence. You find that in Nehemiah in the beginning of chapter 2. It said, when he heard that the walls of Jerusalem were burned down with fire, he was very sad indeed. And when he went in to serve the king, his countenance was sad and he shook. He was terrified because he had never before been sad in the king's presence. Wow. You know, the Holy Spirit would wonder, uh, would we be terrified in coming into the presence of God by being sad? Um, Nehemiah, and what you see from that is when you're sad, in the presence of God, what you're doing is you're forgetting all he has done for you. David said this, um, that God daily loads us with benefits. Uh, sadness makes you forget all the things that God has done for you. Praise God. Not only that Jesus died for you, Give you eternal life, uh, your wife, your children, your husband, your health, your job. So much memories of, of good things in our life. Sadness makes us forget all that God has done. And that's a thing to actually be terrified of. Are you terrified of forgetting? all that God has done, if you are, then you deeply be on guard against the spirit of sadness. The other thing that sadness does is it makes you lose sight of what God can do. Not only makes you forget all that God has done, which is terrifying, absolutely terrifies me that I should forget all that God has done for me, but it blinds you to all that God is and can and will do for you. That is another 
terrifying prospect to begin to lose sight, your faith lose sight of all that God is going to do for you. Wow. I have received today some very sad news indeed. I won't tell you what it's about, but it's very, very sad. And when you receive something that's very sad, it's like an arrow that goes straight into your intestines. You know, you feel it. Everything in your mind goes into chaos at receiving some news that's so sad. But like Nehemiah, I become terrified because I can feel the sadness beginning to blind me from all the good that God has done for me and the joy and the gratefulness of being in God's presence. Amen. And not being sad no matter what. Showing God the appreciation. Thank you, Father. I praise you. I want to tell you now, Jesus, I want to thank you for all that you've done for me. I don't want to lose sight today, no matter what, of all that you've done for me. And you've really got to fight it because sadness will steal that from you. Amen. And also, know for a fact, I know I can feel the presence of God, the plans he has for me and for the person who the sad news has come is absolutely tremendous. I will not believe anything else but the good that God has intended for us. <clears throat> so wonderful. I can feel it. all the joy of knowing the plans that God has for us is good. Really knowing. I'm not just in your mind. Jesus said, I came that you might know that you have life. Amen. And in doing that, a hallelujah, you now completely push down a sadness. As Jesus said, you will trample under the serpent's uh, amen head. So you trample that sadness under food in the name of Jesus. Uh, because like Nehemiah, I may be strong, but when I see what sadness can do, and making me forget all that God has done for me. And lose sight of all that God is, is, is absolutely doing. I now become terrified of being sad in the presence of God. And we have a couple of examples of that. Um, with When you saw um, Aaron, when God struck down his sons because of disobedience inside of the temple. God looked at Aaron and says, don't you tear your garments. Don't you mourn over the loss of these two boys. Why? Because what would have happened to Aaron as he's ministering for the people of Israel, for their sins and their trespasses, he wouldn't be able to do it. Because now sadness uh, would have made him forget all the good that God's done for Israel. And made him forget all the good that God is, not maybe, is going to do for Israel. And therefore the role of the high priest is null and void. So Aaron kept still and uh, saved himself uh, from uh, sadness. Uh, and you find the same at the funeral of Lazarus, when they were weeping, Jesus began to weep. Why? Because of their unbelief. Sadness got the better of them. Jesus said, sadness has filled your heart to the disciples. He said, did you not know I said to you, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believes on me shall never die. And though he dies, yet shall he live. As the Apostle Paul says, sorrow not. Hallelujah. That we protect ourselves. Uh, amen. And become terrified. So that's today's thought today. Amen. If you're going to be terrified of one thing, make sure it's that you be terrified of being sad in sight of the Prince of God. No news that you'll ever receive is more terrifying than you and me becoming sad in the presence of God 
forgetting all the good that God has done for one second and losing sight even for one second of all that God is absolutely going to do. Praise God. And if you can manage that, then they'll know what Paul meant when he said, the joy of the Lord is my strength. Have a blessed day in Jesus' name.